Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. I'm going to have to throw a red flag on boxing. Right? I was doing some research in the heavyweight division, and uh, to my utter amazement, the upcoming fight between Luis Ortiz and Latif Coyote is being called an interim WBA World Heavyweight title fight. Simply put, you have got to be kidding me. Let me backtrack. This is just a rant. Let me give context. Right, you know, statistics really matter in sports because they give us a way to measure performance. Right, you can't suddenly decide that you're going to call doubles home runs and then try to compare that to the accomplishments of men like Hank Aaron and Babe Ruth, right? It doesn't work. I can't call your single a double and then try to compare that to the guys who had a lot of doubles in history. But yet in boxing, we keep moving the goalposts. We keep diluting concepts such as titles, Understand when Henry Armstrong, one of the greatest fighters in history, held three belts at one time, right? Three titles at one time in different weight classes. Understand there were only eight weight classes. So when you said back then, he held titles in three weight classes, you understood what that meant. You understood that when we talked about weight classes, they were wide. Right? Well, now we have more weight classes. Right? You have things like the super lightweight division. You have super welter. You have super middle. Etc. Understand, back in the day, you didn't even have the cruiserweight division. You didn't. Right? Back in the day, when middleweight champion Ray Robinson wanted to grab the next title up, there was no super middleweight division. He had to literally fight light heavyweight champion Joey Maxim. Right? For his title. And, of course, there was no catch weight. So today you have so many divisions that you have more titles and more three time, four time, five time, six time, seven time champions. Right? Well, now, of course, they're diluting that even further. Right? You have more boxing organizations than anyone can keep track of, right? When I was a kid, you had the WBA, you had the WBC, right? Now you have the IBF, you have the WBO, and you have others, right? Roy Jones is going around pretending, in my opinion, you can have yours, obviously, that he has a title from some other organization. Right? Just understand that the number of organizations has multiplied. Well, okay, fine. As a longtime boxing fan, I'll put up with the idea that the fighters make more money if we call the fight a title fight. Okay, great. I like the idea, given the risk involved, of fighters making more money. And I understand 
it's easier to draw a crowd if you include the word title in the advertisement for the fight. Right? I also understand that a lot of casual fans or young kids don't realize that the IBC title might not have the historical reverence of, let's say, the WBC title. Okay, fair enough. But they're really going too far these days, aren't they? Because now, what we used to call the mandatory contender, the mandatory challenger, the top-rated contender, right? And you understood back in the day that if you were a contender, you weren't the champion. Well, now they're actually calling that person an interim champion. So it might astonish some people to learn that even though Ruslan Chigayev has not fought Vladimir Klitschko yet for the heavyweight title, it might surprise some people to learn that Ruslan Chigayev is already officially the WBA heavyweight title holder. He's the WBA champion. Right? How did he get that belt? Incredibly, it was <laughs> by fighting Frez Akendo. You know, I wish I were making this stuff up. But someone needs to advise me as to how Frez somehow fought for the WBA World Heavyweight title. Right? Keep in mind, this is so preposterous especially when one realizes that Vladimir Klitschko does hold a WBA title but of course he's not the champion he's something called the super champion in other words what they have done is these sanctioning bodies have now carved up their own titles so you have interim champions you have regular champions and you have super champions right and so understand they're devaluing every championship term that we used to have right when I was a kid and you heard a fight was a unification fight for the title you understood that the WBC champion was fighting the WBA champion Right? That's what a unification title fight was. Both guys had to be champion. Well, now I'm reading reports that interim WBC champion Marco Antonio Rubio is going to fight middleweight champion. Right? In fact, he's not really the champion because... Technically, he's the super champion for the WBA in the middleweight division, Janady Golovkin, right? And of course, now we're hearing that this is supposed to be a unification match, right? Well, how could it possibly be a unification match when Marco Antonio Rubio is an interim champion and not the champion? Because understand, the WBC's champion at middleweight is Miguel Cotto, not Marco Antonio Rubio. So if Gennady Golovkin is fighting someone other than Miguel Cotto, right, who's holding a WBC belt, how could that fight be termed a unification match? In other words, let's just say the way the system is set up today the words unified champion meant more in the past than they do today. In fact, let's focus on that middleweight division for a second. Just the WBA. Right? We know Janady Golovkin is the super champion. But I'm sure many of you are scratching your head. Because many of you thought that WBA, the WBA belt holder at middleweight was Daniel Jacobs. 
Guess what? Jacobs is the WBA middleweight champion. It's just that as Jacobs holds the WBA regular belt, right? The WBA has a super belt held by Janady Golovkin. So think about it. In the past, when we called you a champion, that meant you were top shelf in the division. But Danny Jacobs isn't even top shelf with the WBA in his division, right? His title is junior to Janady Golovkin's title. And just to confuse things even more, of course, there's also a WBA interim champion in the same division at middleweight, Dmitry Chidinov, right? And so this has just gotten out of control, right? Think about, I mean, the whole thing is ridiculous, isn't it, right? Why don't we go back to calling interim champions contenders? How could you have in the same sanctioning body an interim champion and then a regular champion and a super champion in the same division like the WBA has right now at middleweight? So, of course, the idea of a unification match, including an interim champion, to me is absurd. Well, now let's look at the heavyweight division. Just close your eyes for a second and just think about elite heavyweights right now who aren't holding titles. As hard as that is to believe in a division where, you know, Vladimir Klitschko and Richland Chigayev both hold belts from the same sanctioning body, right? But let's just focus at heavyweight. Think about fighters like Tyson Fury, Carlos Takam, right? Adlanir Solis, Andy Ruiz, right? Chris Ariola. Let's even include Seth Mitchell, right? You have a lot of heavyweights out there. Vyacheslav Glasgow, who don't have belts. Right? So someone's going to have to explain to me. Because I really don't know. Right? I'm just not savvy enough. Even though I follow the sport and read boxing articles several times a week. And look at fights every week. I just, for the life of me, can't explain how this Luis Ortiz, Latif Coyote fight is being fought for the interim WBA World Heavyweight title. Now understand, this is so ridiculous because the WBA already has two heavyweight champions. Vladimir Klitschko, really the most legit champion out there for those keeping track of the belts Vladimir Klitschko has. He's the IBF champion. He's the WBO super champion. He's the ring's champion, and of course, he's also the WBA's champion. Excuse me, I'm wrong, super champion. The WBA also has Ruslan Chagayev as its regular champion. Now, of course, unsatisfied with having two guys holding WBA heavyweight titles, now they're going to have Luis Ortiz fight Latif Coyote for the interim WBA World Heavyweight title. Let me just point out that you would expect Luis Ortiz to have fought some of the prime heavyweights out there, right? Understand, guys like, you know, uh, Deontay Wilder are unbeaten. I know Wilder is in line to fight Bermain Stavern. Right, but you would expect to see names like Deontay Wilder, Alexander Povetkin, 
Steve Cunningham, Mike Perez on a resume. If that fighter is going to fight for an interim WBA World Heavyweight title. Here's the shocker. Did you know that four fights ago, Luis Ortiz fought a guy? In fact, it's five fights ago. Who was making his boxing debut. Did you know that three fights ago, Luis Ortiz fought a guy who had a record of 11 wins, 25 losses, and one draw? Did you know Luis Ortiz's last two fights were against Monty Barrett, who lost the fight right before fighting Luis Ortiz, and a guy named Alex Gonzalez, who lost his last two fights before fighting Luis Ortiz. Let me ask a foundational question. What are the qualifications that are required to fight for the interim WBA World Heavyweight title? Because the one thing we know is that it doesn't require having fought elite competition. Right? Well, let's look at Latif Coyote's record. Now, understand, Coyote used to be a cruiserweight. Right? Now, while he has more experience than Luis Ortiz, I mean, understand, Coyote went the distance with Antonio Tarver. Right? A fighter, I believe, is a Hall of Fame fighter. Right? But while Coyote has more experience than Luis Ortiz, just understand that two fights ago, right, in his only fight of 2013, Coyote fought a guy named Travis Fulton whose record was 21 wins, 33 losses, and one draw. Right? That's two fights ago. He fights a guy with a losing record. So then, of course, in his last fight, right, in other words, I've given you the fight before the last fight. Did you know in his last fight, he fought a guy who was coming off of three consecutive losses, who had a record of nine wins, seven losses, and one draw. Those are his last two fights. Folks, those are the only two fights that Latif Coyote has had since the start of 2013. So how could either of these men leapfrog the Tyson Furies of the world and actually qualify for an interim WBA World Heavyweight title match? Let me reach for my red flag again and let me throw it. Because this is outrageous. Right? I can't even say the word quickly here because it's so stunning. Right? I feel like I've been hit with a left hook. This is really dilution of the concept of a title to such an extent that it's an embarrassment for me to even include Henry Armstrong's name in this diatribe. It's crazy. Let me just say this too. For gamblers thinking about betting on this fight, and I, I'll concede both of these guys are talented, but I thought to get title fights, even for interim titles, you had to at least have some major accomplishments in the ring. I thought talent wasn't enough. But let's just put it this way. Luis Ortiz hasn't gone eight rounds in a fight since the end of 2010. Right? Understand that Coyote, right, has little experience at heavyweight. Just look at Coyote's background, right? Just from a gambling perspective, 
something's got to give here. Right? I know this is the most dangerous kind of bet that I can possibly recommend, but I just don't see this fight going the distance. Right? I like both guys by KO. The level of opposition they fought, guys with losing records, guys making debuts, and keep in mind, this is in their last five fights, folks. Right? You know, guys coming off of consecutive losses and stuff like that, to me, doesn't suggest that these guys have been in the ring with real opposition enough to actually tighten up their defense and boxing styles. The fact that Luis Ortiz is 35 years old and big and has been living on chaos tells me that he might not be prepared to fight 12 hard rounds. Understand for gamblers, the beauty of these bogus interim title fights is that they're 12 round fights so guys who really don't deserve to be in such matches are in deeper water than they're accustomed to right coyote hasn't really had to deal with a hard-hitting big heavyweight right so him going 12 rounds that's curious Luis Ortiz really hasn't had to deal with the later rounds Right, so again, I believe that's curious. Both guys do have a punch, at least Coyote did at cruiserweight, right? Coyote's nickname is Power, Luis Ortiz's nickname is the real King Kong. So I'm expecting a big sloppy fight. I'm expecting somebody to get stopped. Not so much because the other guy is a great knockout artist, but more because these guys haven't really fought anyone of substance. Right, Antonio Tarver was rusty when he fought Coyote. And, of course, there was a drug testing scandal at the end of that fight that had it deemed a no contest, right? The fight was actually scored a draw, right? Tarver has had some issues recently. We'll just leave it at that. I encourage you to look up that fight. But just understand that wasn't prime Tarver. Right? That wasn't the Tarver who stopped Roy Jones years ago. Right, This was a Tarver who, if you believe the initial post-fight or immediately pre-fight drug test, um, had cut corners. Right, And so I would argue that that Coyote fight, even though it's more significant than any fight Luis Ortiz has had, and Ortiz was a decorated amateur, look up his full background. But that Tarver fight really shouldn't be overvalued, right? Nor, in my opinion, should we overvalue this fight by believing that it's a legitimate interim title fight or that there should be something called an interim title in situations where the real champion hasn't been involved in a car crash or isn't out campaigning politically like, let's say, a Vitaly Klitschko or a Manny Pacquiao has done in the past. Right? So, just count me among those who can't keep track of not just all of these titles, but all of these titles in the same division from the same sanctioning body. I hope the WBA is completely outraged by the public backlash because they really should be publicly shamed and embarrassed for diluting the concept of having a title to such an extent that fans can't even keep track of the fact that Rushlin Shigayev already is the WBA heavyweight champion, right? At a time when the WBA itself recognizes Vladimir Klitschko as its super champion, right? To call this fight between Luis Ortiz and Latif Coyote a fight for the interim WBA World Heavyweight title really undervalues the value, in my opinion, of holding a WBA belt. Let me close again by throwing the flag. That's three red flags in one video. I think this dilution of the concept of a title warrants at least that. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us 
at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.